everyone, Joe here from Action. Welcome to What's on the Tube, or welcome back if this is your fourth Nancy Drew Season 2 episode review, as well as, even though technically I'm not going to make a big deal out of this, I'm just saying, it is. this is officially the 150th episode of What's on the Tube. That's right, I produce 150 of these. I am so excited, it's not much of a celebration. Um, we'll have something planned for the 169th and the 200th, but so do you know, we crossed 150, it's been hell of a... It's been more than a year, and that's fairly something surprising to me that I, been man, I actually managed to do 150 of these. It, it's crazy. Thank you so much for all the support, and thank you so much for uh, keeping us going. Um, so with that being said, let's enough about the showboatiness. Let's get back to Nancy Drew itself. So this week, um, hopefully, finally, the end is inside for um this Aglaria case. Hopefully, we're wrapping it up. I am kind of a little disappointed though, because like now that I did the math. About everything with the whole, like, how Nancy Drew was supposed to end with season one. I, I believe, I, I could, I could have seen them stretch this out a little bit more. more. Like, I, I've seen them, I'm in the way of, like, of how they stretched it out a little bit. Because, like, I think we ended around episode 18 last time when we ended the season one reviews. And we only had four episodes. So they definitely did stretch an episode um, or two just to make it work for five episodes to give us a little bit more time to breathe into this um post in this current pandemic world um but i do understand that i do again it, it, it was a little bit more time to flush out because even though last week i kind of was a little criticizing the show for stretching it out i feel like here yeah they're ne we're, we're, we're beginning to wrap it up but before we get to that this definitely felt like more like a final countdown with the characters as yeah, um, there's a good chance they may fail, and if it wasn't for the season three renew, I'm like, yeah, 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 y'all are surviving this, or something's being extended, but but most of the, mostly you're gonna survive this because we we did get the season three renewal, so um, yeah, the show will definitely solve their Aglaria mystery. Somehow they're gonna they're gonna solve it. So for this week, um, this definitely felt more of a Sorry, legacy type episode as each of the characters, well, most of the, most of the characters were kind of focusing on their life after the Galeria when they're gone. Because that's kind of the theme. Like, obviously, of course, Nancy wasn't part of it be well, somewhat because, you know, she was still hopeful that they're going to win. They're going to beat the Galeria and then they're going to move on with their lives. They're going to they're going to do, they're gonna do this somehow. But everyone else is kind of thinking... Well, yeah, we believe in Nancy, but there's still a chance they could still die and fail. And I'm not surprised. I, I was not surprised. And definitely, like, Ace kind of started it off with the premiere, like, you know, bringing immortality and, you know, the fact that, yeah, there's a good chance they might die, but everyone else is kind of slowly thinking, like, we're going to figure this out. We're going to solve this. We're going to live. And then we start and then we start up with um, now where it's like, yeah, there's a good chance. Like, they, they're going to die in less than 48 hours. And. There's a lot of things they haven't even done. There's a lot of things that, you know, they have to prepare themselves and the people they are close enough to uh, for that life beyond them. But anyway, let's get through the butchery recap and talk about Nancy Drew, Season 2, Episode 4. Um, we begin this week with... Oh, oh, there. Yeah, we're... A very weird product placement from the... Um, I forgot the name of the company. It's a giant water bottle... What a very neat looking cat. I don't remember that's what that was clear. Why did we have to have so much water in that damn bag and that duffel bag? Like I know Nancy Drew is not the most it is not the most highest rated CW show out there. It is not, but were they in really in big need of a product placement like that to pay the bills? Okay, fine. You know what? Well, whatever you need to do. So they're cleaning up their mess from last, the mess from last week left over, and they're, well, no, oh, no, no, they're not, they're kind of, they're, they're getting ready for, um, to, to build this trap that could work to capture the Aglaria once and for all, um, but as Nick puts it, as he's reading the instructions left over by AJ, this thing is not gonna work. Apparently, um, it can only work with a special wood that has to be blessed by a certain pastor that already passed away, like, three centuries ago. And basically, when you don't even have those two things, you're done. You're done. This isn't going to work at all. And as they're about to throw in the tower, Ace, once again, through the power of the internet, finds there is a, there is an existing working box of that statue on hold 
in a, in a, in a, I believe in a, a library or like a holding place in, in Massachusetts. So I was thinking like, or in Boston, well, Boston, like, like we're going on a road trip. Um, but of course, obviously things are split up since of course there are instructions to how to, for this box to operate. So what they need is kind of like items surrounding the person's death as well as a totem to kind of like just lock them into place as well as a working box. So of course, obviously things are in rules of three. They need these three things. So Ace has to figure out how to go get this box. Nancy and, um, oof, fuck. I already forgot names. <laughs> How the hell do I already forget me? Oh my god, I actually, I actually did, um, I actually did forget. Um, best, be, be, best, best, best. Yeah, so they're off to go get the, uh, the. Um, they're, they're gonna try and find something, then something related to the um, Olette. I think that's her real. Remember that the, the Glaria. I'm gonna just keep calling you Glaria because I've been, I've been calling her death for like now five episodes. And George and Nick are going to basically... Oh, oh, no, they already found the totem because um, they they have the sand that was left over from Nick's death from last season. Wait, is it Nick's death? Oh, crap. Was I... Oh, duh. Did I, did I really misspell the... Oh, my God. I am such a horrible host. I completely forgot the names of the characters of the show that I'm reviewing on my, like, oh my God, I, I get, oh, uh, what kind of blind of business am I in? I can't even remember that. Um, so they have that and they have to also, they also, George and, um, oof, I forgot. <laughs> oh my God. Um, the other two are off that. They have to hold down the fort since again, remember there's still a running business here. And if you're wondering why I'm more louder than usual is because I have, a, I have a much more empty for your house, even with my curtain system. I still, I'm very, I'm still very um, self-doubting myself. Um, yeah, so someone's gonna hold down shop. So they're they're holding down the shop because remember they they still need to get paid. They still need. There's a running business with people. I'm not, I, I'm I'm gonna be completely honest here. If Nancy Drew somehow gets to episode 100, which I'm hopeful it will, I'm, I'm I'm a very hopeful person. But if it somehow gets that far, or maybe we get to some anniversary episode, I want to see an episode where we see the other claw members like the other employees point of view of like when the drew crew are off doing some cases like how was i, I want to see that episode i'm really curious to see how that episode would be so um i'm giving you i'm giving you a pitch um names of drew writers um take my idea and also call me i'm, I'm available for anything um so they split up from there uh, multiple storylines as always so i'm gonna go for the each of the storylines fairly quickly not quickly but like i'm just gonna go them in um, easier. I also was gonna call this um, episode review two in, two men in a legacy and two men in a legacy, but I'm like, nah, that's too on, that's too on the nose. And um, I don't think everyone watched two men and a half. Well, two men and a baby or two 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 and a half men. Oh, it was two and a half men. I haven't seen that show yet. I I, I got it. It's on my list some someday. Um, so we're gonna start with Ace. Ace is visiting um Carson, Mister Drew. Uh, well, it initially just seems to be like you know just Ace being a nice dude and just chilling with Mister Drew because. Again, I feel sorry for him because, remember, his daughter basically is, like, kicked him out of his own house. His studies basically being started back up from the ground up. And, um, yeah, and he's living off his, he's living in his freaking study. Well, he's living in his office, you know, so. Yeah, that's not really, not really good for Mr. Drew, but he's saying, like, look, I'm fine. I know you're coming to stay, to come and check up on me. I'm good. Ace is like, well, technically, I'm not really checking up on you. I need your help. He wants he wants Mr. Drew's um, lawyer experience to kind of like figure out if there's a way to get the box off loan, being as a cover as being the Marvin's lawyer still and trying to um, claim it on their behalf. So they need him, but Mr. Drew's like, eh, I'm not really. No, nah, I'm not gonna do this. Like, cause I um, I don't like to lie, and basically, you know, it, it would be wrong. But Asa, if I can get someone else to assist us with the matter. So they call in pff, the freaking way. Like I, I completely like when we got to the when we switched over to the car scene and it was um Ryan there. I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry. I'm yawning, but up early again. Oh, where was I? Oh yeah, the, the way they just pan over to Ryan being in the car. Like I was offered coffee, and here I am in a car with a kid I barely know. And a man that I hate. <laughs> this could have been this could have been the entire episode, and I would have loved it. Um, yeah, it is pretty awkward. Um, so Ryan's there to act as the Hudson, the the, the Hudson that uh, that is needed, and 
Mr. Mr. Drew's there to be the, the lawyer, seeing that's enough to try and get the box from the the holding place. I forgot the name of it. Um, Ace tries to defuse the situation by playing some weird random games, and it's and it kind of drags on a little bit. I'll say that much. That scene definitely does drag a little bit longer than it should have. So they eventually arrive. Uh, obviously, Ryan's making some coy jokes at uh, Mr. Drew about you know fathership and how. You know, how much they needed Ryan because he was the real father. Now, Mr. Drew, and then they're, you know, they're about to come to blows on some things. Um, the people in charge of the box come over and they sadly decline their request to take out the box on loan because, you know, it's just too valuable to be t even taken out on, on, on loan. But Ryan decides to wave over his big, fat, long checkbook. What do you think I was going to say? I, this is, I'm, I'm still trying to be PG-13 at times. I mean, you know, don't worry. I'm still being I'm still being very um, restrictive, mind you. Um, he pays for it. He, I'm pretty sure he pays, like, something so absurdly high. But, you know, he gets it. Again, I have no idea how the Hudsons are going to react when they just see a huge withdrawal out of their bank account. But they get it. They get the box. And on the way home, again, um, Ryan's making... More, uh, more stat jabs at uh, Mr. Drew's expense for, uh, again, being there for Nancy, you know, paying for things that she needs. And Mr. Drew's like, look, that's not even the first thing to be a father. Like, you know, it's not just about buying your way into a relationship with Nancy. You know, you got to really be there. And they're about to come to blows to each other until Nancy calls in. And she accidentally reveals a bit because the whole thing is that Ace did not reveal anything. About the matter with um, Mr. Drew and, and Ryan because, you know, um, Nancy doesn't want to get them involved in anything because she still needs a little bit of distance from them to kind of figure things out. Because apparently, I think they confirmed that in this episode, it's been five days, five, six days since the season finale, since the whole revelations and everything happened. And I'm like, damn, it has been one hell of a week. They, they, they definitely stretched out this time period over a lot of episodes, so I will give them that much. But... To move on from that, um, where do we, where do we, yeah, so, yeah, I think this is where we start intersecting scenes, but, um, they, we hit a gas station, um, Ace is off somewhere paying for the gas, Ryan and, um, and Mrs. Drew have a kind of like a little bit of a heart on heart, um, Ryan apologized for his behavior because he was a bit upset that, um, Mr. Drew got the chance to be Nancy's father when in reality Ryan was the real father. And he can't really hold that against Mr. Drew any longer because, you know, it's... And he'll, he'll eventually say this to Nancy later on. Like, he was a kid. He was only, what, 17, 18 years old when Nancy was born? How the hell were you supposed to raise a kid by then if he was if he, if he, even if he didn't even know who he, he himself was? So, honestly, I think Ryan came to more of an understanding quickly than a lot of other people, so... Um, I give him a lot of credit for that. Also, I think I did. I, I talked about that that topic somewhat on a on, on a previous Let's Go Talk, so you can go check that out. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, so um, they agree. Like, yeah, they got to figure out what, what's up with Nancy. Um, they want to figure out what's up th with Nancy, but Mr. Drew's not going to get anything out of her. But Ryan seems he's still to be a little bit of the. Um, He's still a little bit of the um, in the clear with Nancy. Like he's not entirely, she's not entirely one hundred percent comfortable with him, but he's she's more comfortable with him than Mr. Drew is. So um, he heads over while Nancy's doing another thing with the mystery. Um, and you know they talk for a little bit. Ryan basically tries to tell her that like, look, I think it was a good thing I wasn't your father growing up since um, I wasn't ready at the time. Even though I'm not ready right now, I would still like to give it a chance. Now that you're kind of you know of age to kind of like, you know, give him some passes that, then and there, which Nancy is comfortable in exploring that, you know, what does that relationship look like with Ryan? Um, Ryan does help her up with the mystery, which I'll come back to later on. And, um, oh, oof. Oh, damn. I have, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, God. Oh, God. Of course I lose my life sword. Of course, and the camera moves. Everything's just falling apart because, so here's the thing about my light swords, if I have to go off, if I have to go off topic a little bit. So, our um, friendly collaborator and helper of the channel, and also part-time member George, um, he bought me some uh, a, a light stand for my birthday, and he, I, he here's the thing about the pandemic. Obviously, of course, we haven't had parties, we haven't had any sort of like birthday celebration, we haven't had any of those. So, um, when I asked him to like. Hey, can you bring over, like, so I bought him his presents and I, um, I gave him 
his presents, his birthday present, Christmas present by mail. And then he told me like, oh yeah, I bought your presents too. And it was shipped to his home and I haven't seen him since. So, and he bought me light stands. So, um, if you're wondering why I, I, off the time I always come by the light, you can blame George for not shipping that over to me. I'm kidding, man. I love you. Um, he will be back on the show soon, but, um, anyway, where was I? Um, uh, we were talking about, yeah. So after Ryan helps out Nancy with the, um, with her dilemma and the mystery, um, Ryan texts Carson that Mr. Drew that, hey, yeah, something's up with Nancy, you know, but, you know, now they're both wondering what is going on and, you know, how do they get involved in this? Um, and then I believe there's a George and Nick. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It was Owen. I was right. I wasn't like, because I'm right. Like, Owen, Owen, yeah, because of, I remember because of total drama. That, that, that's basically the only reason why I, I would freaking know. Um, so where was I? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, so. On George and Nick's side, they're, they're, they're not really involved in the mystery per se. Um, Nick's just toying with, with some things while everyone else is getting the other um, the other things that, the, that, they, that they need to like kind of put an end to this. George is still very... She believes in Nancy, but she's being um, a realistic, realist here and is still thinking, hey, maybe... I need to start preparing the, the next oldest... Um, I forgot her last name. Uh her next oldest sister to become the new head of the family since her mom is still drunk. And yeah, she's definitely not going to take care of the others while, you know, she's away because they're still nothing, but uh, which is convenient because she, um, the oldest, the next oldest sister shows up um, to uh, ask for the house key. But then George says, you know what? You're going to work at the claw. You're going to become the new me. You're going to get ready to become the next me. And I feel so sorry for this poor kid. Like, she was not expecting this at all. It is. It, it, this was just so freaking hilarious, and and the, it was kind of like really like I can relate to like her. Like you're just starting a new job. You're still so young. You don't know what you're doing, and everyone's just complaining like, "Oh my god, look at this new girl!" And she had enough of it. She gave up like five minutes into the job. Um, George is trying to explain to her why she needs to be working there and, you know, trying to be more responsible. And even her, she says, like, look, when you're not there, I'm always in charge. I'm responsible, just not in the way you want me to be. And, they, and she leaves in disappointment. Um, Nancy comes in um, around the same time. Also, jo also um, Nick is working on a uh, another ghost goggles, I guess, apparently, which is going to come to play later. But um, he's developing those since... Uh, he was reading through AJ's notes that there is a there is a probable way of seeing ghosts with these goggles, which I swear to God, I know this is made up sign, but I'm pretty sure, like, the way he explained it, it's like, this could be a real thing. I mean, we could be on the way to figuring out how to make ghost goggles. Mark my words. So Nancy calls a team meeting, which doesn't include the whole team. I was kind of really bummed and was kind of hoping to see everyone at play but nope it was just um it's just george nancy and, and nick and george kind of goes off on net nancy for not getting much more progress done on the whole matter she leaves but it's but she's not really mad at nancy she's just mad about the whole sister thing in general um nick and nancy have a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one about you know everything and just to give george a little bit of space and i got a little bit worried because they were talking about and getting to know each other a little bit more and then i kind of got a little scared the way nancy was looking at him and like nancy he had his reasons. You gotta... You, please don't even bother. I can't deal with another freaking CW love triangle over here. I cannot. Uh, and thankfully Nick doesn't follow suit on them, which I'm like, thank God. Um, yeah, but, and then I think the last thing does, does his focus on Nick and George were um, downstairs closing up shop. George is kind of like still looking for her sister because she hasn't went home yet. So um, Nick... Goes to comfort her. George is kind of like a bawling mess, which is kind of out of the ordinary for the character. Is my microphone connected? My microphone is connected. Just making sure. I'm just. I was a little worried because when I did the Walker review last week, um, I don't know what happened, but I just lost all the audio. So I'm like, fuck. So I gotta make sure everything's fine with this um, recording. So pardon me when if I keep looking back and forth to the to the monitor. I believe. Nick, yeah. So they talk and Nick is trying to console her like a boyfriend should be, and. Basically, um, Nick Nick says the only reason why he's more optimistic now more than ever because he has George now. He sees a – he's hopeful. He wants a chance at a real future with her, and he, he wants to see where that would go without this when this Aglaria mystery is all over and said and done. 
And he says, I love you to George, which even I'm thinking, like, I get the moment, I get the understanding, I get the situation, but, like, didn't you just start dating her? Oh, hi. Sorry about this. Um, didn't you start dating her, like, less than a week ago? Like, I understand, yeah, they knew each other for a little bit longer than that, but, like, you just started dating her, like, oh, like about a week or two ago. Like, you really should not be jumping... That far ahead would it like, sure, you already slept together. I know that. I know all that, but still. And thankfully, George does not say, I love you too. Uh, she just says, like, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not ready to say that. And Nick's, Nick agrees. Says, yeah, that's fine. You know, it, it, it's fine. I don't need you to say it to me right now. You know, you'll say it when it's time, which I'm like, thank you. It's finally someone understandable in this world. Um, George goes off to look for her sister, which who she's already conveniently outside. They talk about everything, and, you know, um, George is kind of apologizing for her for her overreaction about the whole thing, and um, the sister brings up the fact that, yeah, she kind of knows that what's going on, but not to the extent that she knows, because she knew she knows George might die, because, not because the Aglaria curse, and this is something I completely forgot, the blood bucket from last season, I'm like, oh my god, I completely forgot about that. Because... Everything happens so quickly because with the um, with the the Lucy the Lucy thing the Tiffany thing and now the Aglaria thing like yeah I completely forgot about the bucket like yeah that's an omen that you know George might die regardless and I think that might be a building because if I'm thinking like realistically off camera right now in terms of like that could be a fail safe and that could be just like a way because I. I, I think the actress who plays George is, like, I think a little bit more successful than everyone else. So, I think, like, if she was to leave the show, there there would be the excuse. I hope she doesn't. She's a really... She, this is the Drew crew. This is the dream team right here. I really hope they don't change the core anytime soon. If you So, I, that's what I'm hopeful for. So, either way, George, you know, just hugs her, lo says I love you, and then, you know, just puts her on her way to home. Um, and then, on to Nancy and Bess. I think, I think it's... I'm saying the last. I think I'm saying Bess. Is it Bess? I think it's Bess. I'll have to look this up later because I'm a horrible host. So they go up to find this idol, this thing that's gonna like draw the Glaria back to them to into the box. They do some research around. They head to this church that um that has some sort of connection to them. Um, they mean to. They run run into this tour guy and his tour that are just doing a horseshoe bay, um tour, which I'm like. I don't understand the tourism industry at all, and I don't even know how much these guys get paid just to walk around all the time. I really don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be a little bit rude there, but I'm like, I really do not understand how the hell this the economics of tourism works. I really don't. So, um, Nancy, for some reason, just gets a little bit heated with this tour guide after he kind of, like... Like, obviously, Nancy and the others know the real story that was going on, but, of course, obviously, the tour guide doesn't because this is not really something that's public and available. So Nancy kind of goes off on him. They have a little bit of a, of a heated debate, and um, one of the tour the tourism just re starts recording Nancy just saying all this. I'm like, damn, Nancy's popular. Um, they also get a lead that there's a um, there's a nearby house that um, one of the town founders um, lived in, which who was the husband to um, Odell the Aglaria Agl before. So they head up there. They look around. Um, they're trying to find anything in particular. I don't know how, but they, they lead into the cellar or the basement area. Nancy does a very horrible, uh, horrible in terms of like bad time anime, horrible in general, like in terms of quality joke towards Bess with um, her like trying to be overreacted and then just revealing like, no, it's just a, it's just an abandoned bed. Um, but then one thing they notice from the bed frame is that on the ground, um, there was a lot of drag marks, a lot of struggle marks, meaning that someone was trapped there and was trying to get out. So something more was at play here. But then they get a little bit of a visiting from a haunting um, of a ghost that um, closes the door on them, that turns off all their lights. And yeah, this kind of felt like a little bit like a, something out of a um, paranormal flick. Just like, is, it, is the ghost going to get them? Are they going to get caught? Like, what's going to go on? What's going to happen? And... Um, they managed to get out, but what was kind of weird and kind of like a little bit eye batting was that they yelled and they pushed the door so hard. But there was the tour, the tour guide and his tour in the next room. Like, did none of them hear anything that was going on? Are you serious? Like, were these guys just mute or you know deaf or something? Like, I really don't know. So 
Nancy goes to talk with the tour guide, tries to ask him if there was any old remaining relics or memorabilia or anything related to the time period at all at this house. And he points her to this diary journal book that was left over from um, o o Odette. Odette. And although Nancy's a little bit more curious to study the book, the tour guide won't, won't let him, uh, let her touch the book any further because it's, it's still, it's all vintage. The tour guide manages to, um, go away because the torch is kind of like demanding him to like, let's go, let's keep moving on. Let's get, let's convene to get away from this room that this woman was having a clear interest in this book and it was already touching. And of course, obviously Nancy takes the book and starts reading it, trying to decode anything at all, uh, trying to read it at all. Um, and then we come back over to Nancy with George and Nick, as I said before, during that recap. So she decides to take the ghost goggles to try once again to try even connect with the ghost down there. And she actually does, but it doesn't really work as well as she uh, I hope She gets some weird letters and stuff like that. This is when then the Ryan sub the, the Ryan thing comes into play. And it turns out the, the things that um, Nancy got from the seller were actually um, notes. They were actually lyrics. And it, it spells out something. And then Nancy uses that information to go on the next path. Also, just to... I, forgot, I, I completely forgot about Bess herself. Because she also has some some development this week. Um, she's reunited with Elizabeth. And I completely forgot about Elizabeth. Because, honestly, with the pandemic and everything. I just, compl I just thought they were going to write her off. Because, like... To reduce the amount of cast members on set. To reduce... The spread of COVID. Slash, I don't entirely remember what the hell happened in the season one finale because it's been so long. So, I know they're not a stable couple anymore, or at least they're not on unsure footing. But Elizabeth does believe in this relationship, and she wants to take it to the next level. She wants Bess to meet her parents, and that's kind of like a really big deal. But obviously, Bess knows that with everything going on, is it really the right time to meet her parents? Is this really the direction she wants to go in, but to satisfy her and to kind of like just keep her still in her life, she says, yeah, I'll come, I'll, I'll go, I'll go meet your parents tonight while she's trying to get this all solved by, um, with this whole Galeria thing by then. Um, she also gets a little bit of piece of advice from Nancy back at the house about how, what to do in the situation. Nancy just tells her like, look, I know you, we, we can't tell anyone what's going on right now, but you can still be there and just showcase your love for her by, being willing to be there to kind of meet her family, which is really a big step in this. So I believe from there, yeah. So Nancy manages the decodes um, the thing back to the church. I believe it was the church. She finds this box that has a note from the, um, the founder's second wife, Odell's husband, that admits the truth about, and also has the necklace that admits the truth about. Yeah, she was murdered. All of her riches were taken, and now she just feels really bad that um, she died. And you know, now that she's kind of like reaping in the reward of it, she's tr she tried to speak up for it back in the day, but because she told and confessed to someone who was a co-conspirator of this whole thing, they had them. They had them like planned out to like kind of label her, label label her as a loony, and you know, basically discredit her and lock her away so that she can't tell no one about it. Which I'm like, Jesus Christ, like that's a little bit extreme. So they have what they need. Um, they have the necklace, they have the idol, and they have the um, the box. So they head over back to the beach once again. The trap the Aglaria. They summon the Aglaria, and I'm like, God, I'm like, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be actually proud. This was some pr pretty good VFX work here. This was pretty good. Um, the Aglaria gets drawn into the box, and briefly, while she was heading towards the box, her, her, like her hand turns into a human hand, and. They were so close to getting her in there, but then, uh, unfortunately, um, sorry, I'm still looking at the camera there. Um, she doesn't fall for it. She starts backing away. She starts getting even more mad at Nancy and the crew about it. Um, Nancy's trying to plead with her that, look, we know the truth. We want to help you. We want to expose to give you some peace. She's just too far gone. This is like a, something like a, it's not even a ghost type thing anymore. This is more like a demonic entity and like there's little to nothing you can do in terms of redemption. So, I thought I heard something, sorry. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, it's still not enough, but the Glaria manages to get weakened when she destroys the box. Like, something just rattles her chain, her, her neck, and she backs away. But, after everything they did, it was still, like, a lost cause at the end. But, the only one takeaway that they take from this was that 
the sand. It managed, it managed to turn the Galeria's hand into human, which makes her vulnerable. So there's 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 a chance that they could kill her. And now that's what they're going to do. So we went from trying to break the curse from saving the Galeria to catching the Galeria to now killing the Galeria. And this is it, the final day. So this is kind of like Majora's Man. Like, this is their last chance. If they do not do that, they're all fucked. And will they survive this? Who knows? Because that was the end of the episode. So, I still really... I think this was a much better uh, step up from last week. Um, we're definitely finally wrapping it up. We got some more development for George, for Ace, for Bess. A little bit for Nick and Nancy. There's definitely a future for Nancy and her two dads. <laughs> oh my god, that just sounds so weird to say. Nancy and her two dads um, in the, when we event, inevitably finish this Aglaria uh, mystery. Um, I'm, I'm still very looking to, forward to what they're going to do next because they have so far not set up anything in terms of like, yeah, what's the next thing to do after this, um, in my opinion. So I'll be very curious to see what the plan is. So we'll see how that goes in the, um, the next coming weeks. Because I think from my scheduling, I think we're going up to episode 6 with no hiatus. So, I think that's a good thing. So, we'll see how that goes um, in the next few weeks. I'll keep you all up to date. Um, but for me, overall, I give this episode two thumbs up. So, we're back to the usual scale of uh, of greatness. And I think that's going to do for me for this week. So, if you're unaware, this has been What's on the Two from Action. It's reviewing every episode in Nancy Drew's second season. If you want to know what we're doing overall on What's on the Two, spot this despite this the I can't speak English tonight. I apologize um, besides our those reviews we're doing every Walker episode reviewed on Friday mornings after brand new episode on Thursday nights on the CW and free the next day on the CW.com and the CW app we're also doing rookie season 3 episode reviews each and every Monday morning after brand new episode on Sunday nights on ABC we're back also yeah, and then a Hulu the next day we're back this Monday it's been two weeks off. I missed the rookie. Can't wait to be back in that world next week. So, brace yourself. The quick impressions were fun. If you missed those, we did one on Smallville and then we did one on Lost this week. So, check those out if you, if you missed those. But if you don't care about Nancy Drew Season 2, you're in luck. We'll be back next week with the next episode review. Hopefully, to be the end of the Aguilera Mystery, we can move on from this. And, yeah. So, we'll be back next week. So, again, if you're unaware, this has been Wilson 2 from Action. If you want to see more of us, from what's on the tube, please subscribe to ActionX on YouTube.com. Ring that bell for notification when our next episode review is live, which is each and every Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Oh, wait, Thursday morning. Sorry about that. Um, follow us on social media to be up to date on any sort of uh, updates with the channel. And uh, follow us on Twitch. Like, favorite, share this review if you want to, to get us out to the other fans of the Drew Crew. That is not yet the start us, but it does really help us out. And it's for free. Um, but for, again, for you, Drew Crew, I'll see you guys next week. But until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other as always, and peace out.